On August 28, 2020, billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk revealed a technology with the potential to act as an interface between a computer and the human mind. He and his team have already implanted such a device in a pig named Gertrude. If fully realized, it will be one of the biggest and scariest announcements in the history of science. Elon Musk seems to have a knack for taking things that seem impossible, or at least impractical, and making them a reality. He's most famous for his Tesla car company and for SpaceX. But if his neuroscience startup company, known as Neuralink, succeeds, cars and even space may seem like small potatoes. He believes Neuralink's brain-computer interface will help or even cure people suffering from neurological conditions like dementia and spinal cord injuries. But that's just the beginning. Eventually, he hopes that such a link will enhance human intelligence, giving humans a chance in what he believes will one day be a battle between us and machines with artificial intelligence for world supremacy. Stop for a second and consider the enormity of his plan. Future humans may never need to read. Instead, they may simply download data. With your brain connected to the cloud, you might buy access to a book and the knowledge it contains. Every word would become instantly and permanently accessible. That is permanent unless you only buy temporary access or a knowledge rental. In that case, when the rental period ends, you would lose access to the book in the cloud. But that's just the beginning. The chip would give everyone photographic memory. And get this, connected humans could share their thoughts and memories with one another through the air. These tools would extend human capability in ways limited only by the imagination. Now think of all this power falling into the hands of a fallen humanity. For the first time, thought police might really be possible. Computers run on software, and software requires updates, or so they say. Cars have become rolling computers. The software in those cars require regular upgrades. You used to have to go to the dealer for an upgrade, but more and more new cars have the ability to receive over-the-air upgrades. The manufacturer sends out an upgrade, and you won't even notice it unless there's a problem or unless something suddenly starts working better. The point is, on these cars, you don't have to do anything to make it happen. The upgrades will be automatic. We see similar things with phones, computers, and even cable boxes. Now imagine your brain connected to a computer. Would upgrades be pushed out from headquarters? If the communist leaders of China had such a device implanted in their citizens today, how would they use it? Would its over-the-air upgrades include new ways of thinking, new ways of serving the state and the party? Would each new upgrade increase their level of control over the minds of their citizens? Where would the limits be? Would it be possible to go to bed a Democrat and wake up a Republican? This is brave new world stuff. No one yet knows where it might lead. If you can learn a book by downloading its contents, you can be taught new attitudes by having information uploaded to your brain. And if you choose to receive the chip, they can send your brain whatever they want to send whenever they want to send it. How much influence can they have? I don't know. Will it be possible for government elites to force their views into their citizens' minds? Will criminals or foreign governments hack your thoughts? Will they try to influence those thoughts? Will big brother corporations buy direct-to-brain advertising? 
Maybe you would welcome such advertising if the computer chip picked up hunger signals from your stomach and instantly brought up the location of the nearest McDonald's. Does all that sound kind of terrible? How about this? What if the chip could make everyone happy and everyone nice? What if being implanted with a chip allowed you to lose certain freedoms but receive other freedoms in exchange, such as the freedom to mentally go anywhere and do anything, anytime, and have every part of that artificial experience feel completely authentic? After all, it's in your brain that you experience the world. For some people, it would mean sex with anyone, anytime, seemingly without real-world consequences. It would mean dark fantasies fulfilled, and it would mean darker and darker fantasies. Now, what does all this have to do with Bible prophecy? It could fit in with the mark of the beast as described in Revelation 13, but for that to happen, I think its development would have to happen with miraculous speed. The book of Revelation tells us again and again that no one who receives the mark of the beast will be forgiven for receiving it. It's the final and ultimate moral choice against God. Could that be because receiving the mark will remove the capability of further moral choice? Might receiving the mark be a choice to give up moral free will, give it to the government of Antichrist in exchange for the promise of a life of peace, pleasure, and adventure, free of want and free of pain. I expect the rapture to happen soon, and not long after that, the rise of Antichrist. Can this technology be ready? I don't know. I do know that Elon Musk is not the only one working on it. Governments and their militaries, as well as large corporations all over the world, are working right now to make the neural link between brain and computer a reality. This also applies to Bible prophecy in another way. I think it is one of several technologies that would change humanity so much that it could effectively end our ability to make our own moral choices, and that's what it is to be human. Jesus will come soon to rescue us from just this kind of danger. I know talk of brain manipulation can be disturbing, especially for parents and grandparents. The little ones born in the last few years face a world unlike that of any previous generation. The Bible has a remarkable answer to the fear you might have for yourself, for those you love, and for your fellow human beings. The Bible says, fear not. Jesus put it like this, let not your heart be troubled. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Among other things, those words, Savior and Lord, mean He is your rescuer, your guide, and your captain, the supreme being of your existence, and the friend who sticks closer than a brother. If He isn't those things to you, then act now. At this moment, He's calling your name and waiting for your response. He does not promise tomorrow. So turn to him now. Confess your sins to him. Ask for forgiveness. Give your life to him. The Bible says to tell others if you've made that decision. Maybe your friends wouldn't understand. If you need to tell someone, get in touch with me. I'll understand. If you already belong to Jesus, now is the time to place your trust in him more fully than ever. The present condition of the world may have you feeling like you're caught in an old Perils of Pauline movie tied to the railroad tracks. The rails have been singing and now they're starting to rumble. You see the smoke billowing and it's getting close. The train is coming. It's big, dark, and unrelenting. You feel completely vulnerable, more terrifying still. You realize you're not alone. Your children are tied to those tracks with you. Where are hope and peace when calamity bears down, not only on you, but on those you love? Hope and peace are in the same place they've always been. They're in Jesus. 
He said, peace I give you, not as the world gives. The world gives an unstable, transient kind of peace, but his peace is permanent and ever-present. In those old movies when the dastardly villain ties the damsel to the tracks, does the train ever run her over? Does the villain ever win? Never. Her hero always arrives in time. That's fiction. But Jesus is real. If you want his help, ask. He won't let you down. He promised he did not equivocate. Perilous times have come. But Jesus promised never to leave us or forsake us. So keep trusting him. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. Look for our next program in mid-September. God willing, I'll see you then.